everybody, Brian Alvarez here on Wrestling Observer Live. We are here every day, Monday through Friday, New Pacific 3 Eastern, Sunday 3 Pacific 6 Eastern. Friday here on this show, and you know what that means? It means it's Friday on this show, and you never know what that means, actually. But we do have news to talk about here today, and I actually want to start off with the bad news. Former WWE Tough Enough winner Sarah Lee has passed away at 30 years old. Lee's passing was announced by her mother, Terry Lee, in a Facebook post on Thursday. Cause of death has not been disclosed. It is with heavy hearts we want to share that our Sarah Weston has gone to be with Jesus, Terry Lee wrote. We are all in shock and arrangements are not complete. We ask that you respectively, or respectfully let our family mourn. We all need prayers, especially Corey and her children. In 2015, Lee was voted the female winner of the most re- recent season of WWE Tough Enough. As one of the two winners of the show, she earned a $250,000 WWE contract to join the Performance Center. However, she departed WWE in 2016. She was married to former WWE wrestler Wesley Blake. The couple had three children together. Just a couple of days ago, she posted something on Instagram. She was, she'd been back in the gym after a sinus infection, and... Then word broke yesterday, so all the best to the family and friends, our condolences, and that's a story. Really nothing else to say about it except it's a horrible story, and uh, the best to everybody. Got a lot of other news to get into here today. If you want to text us, 425-780-7566. That is 425-780-7566. Brian at WrestlingObserver.com, at Brian Alvarez on Twitter. And Mike Sumberviv is going to join us after the break. We'll talk the ratings. A huge weekend of shows coming up. One show after another, starting with three big shows tonight and more on four big shows, actually. So we'll talk about that after the break. Observer Live. Back in the show, Brian Alvarez here, Wrestling Observer Live. Mike Sumberviv, also of WrestlingObserver.com. And holy smokes, do we have a big weekend of shows coming up here. SmackDown tonight, Rampage tonight, Battle of the Belts tonight, the TNA Bound for Glory pay-per-view tonight, Extreme Rules tomorrow. There's a New Japan show tomorrow. I can't watch it all, but I'm going to watch Are you going to watch John Moxley and Nick Gage also tomorrow? Oh, my God, that's tomorrow as well. That is tomorrow. Yeah, not looking good. Bro, <laughs> let me tell you something about John Moxley and Nick Gage. I'm not sure if you guys are aware of this or not, but John Moxley is the current GCW champion. And for those of you that don't know what was supposed to happen, at the at the All Out show this year, CM Punk beat John Moxley. And John Moxley was going to go on vacation. He said it in a promo. He was going to be gone, I don't know if it was six weeks, eight weeks, but he was going to be gone for a substantial period of time. And as a result of that, GCW set up a storyline where John Moxley is going to defend the GCW title against the biggest babyface ever in GCW, Nick Gage. And the stipulation is that Nick Gage's career is on the line. So Nick Gage either beats John Moxley and wins the title... Or Nick Gage retires. Now, it's possible that none of this matters and Nick Gage is just going to retire. But it is professional wrestling. And, I mean, if I had to make a bet, I would bet that Nick Gage is not going to retire. And that he is probably scheduled to win this title from John Moxley. Because John Moxley was supposed to just be on vacation. He was supposed to be the AW champion. So then, all hell broke loose at All Out, and now John Moxley is the AEW champion. So now we got potentially an issue. As noted, if Nick Gage is just done, he's out, it's not an issue. But if Nick Gage was supposed to win, now you've got the AEW champion, who was not supposed to be the AEW champion. And my guess is Tony Khan's, I would think, probably not high on the idea of the AEW champion going to a GCW show, which Mike explained was outside in the parking lot or something, and losing the title to Nick Gage. Obviously not the AEW title. So this is this is a, 
uh, potentially, you know, I'm very intrigued by what they do this weekend. Because here's the deal. What's John Moxley's character? He's he's the man of the people. He's not a corporate guy. He goes out there, he does indie dates here and there. John Moxley's character is not the sort of guy that shows up and goes, I'm just going to hand over this title. John Moxley's character is not the guy who's not going to show up. The John Moxley character, right? He should be going right. to GCW and putting over Nick Gage if that was a scheduled finish. Well, but now he's got a championship that he, you know, Tony doesn't usually let his champions go and just do jobs on any shows. It's rare, as in it's never happened. So it'll be very interesting this weekend. What is going to happen in John Moxley and Nick Gage? We'll see. It's intriguing. I'm just interested to see where they go. This thing is on the pier in Atlantic City, so they could be hanging off the uh, one of the gimmick rides or in the arcade or in the water. <laughs> it's going to be very, very interesting, especially on a night that's looking like it's going to be under 50 degrees and maybe a little bit of rain. It's going to be fascinating. going to be fascinating for guys like Nick Wayne and Shun Skywalker. That's on the show. That is a, if you really think about it, it's like a head exploding match between the two. Tony Deppin and Yamato, they got a couple of the Dragon Gate guys who have come over. But, you know, I worry about that. You know, you get the slippery canvas. You got all those other things that, that come with running outside, especially in possibly inclement weather. So it is a, it's certainly going to be an interesting weekend. You know, the, the other thing, if, if I were asked, what do you do? In this situation, if you're Tony Khan. And here's my answer. My answer is that uh, if Nick Gage is supposed to win the GCW title, my answer is John Moxley goes in there and Nick Gage beats him and wins the GCW title. And then, whenever, guess who shows up on Dynamite and he's getting an AEW championship match and then John Moxley beats him. Oh, well, they don't because, have to worry about dominoes. <laughs> I mean, here's the end of the day. Here's 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 the thing. Let's say that would it have been the end of the world if Juice Robinson would have beaten John Moxley in that title eliminator, and then a week later they have the title match and Moxley beats him? Of course not. It would have made no, no difference whatsoever. Is it going to make one bit of difference, business wise, if Nick Gage goes in there and beats John Moxley? No. No. If you're concerned about it then you can have John Moxley beat Nick Gage on television. But honest to God, here's the thing. I don't think you even need to do that. And I think that given the character that John Moxley portrays, given the, uh, you know, the, the AEW, they, they, they want to give the impression that, you know, we're not a big corporation. We, we care about the fans. And the fans... You know, they were promised this match, and circumstances came up. So you know what? We're going to give them the match, and we're going to do something you don't expect. We're actually going to have our champion lose on an indie show. And it gives it, it gives them cred. It gives John Moxley cred. And there's nobody, there is no passionate AEW fan that's going to hear that John Moxley lost a match to Nick Gage at a GCW show and go, Ah! This guy's a fake champion. I can't watch this show anymore. Win <laughs> SmackDown how, on with Roman. How Not can he face Inoki now? <laughs> Not one. Hey, look, I mean, honestly, it could very well be the case that Nick Gage was going to retire, lose this match. I think everybody Maybe he assumed, was. Yeah, I mean, as soon as you see it on paper, you go, well, Moxley's been champion over a year. This would be a great chance to get it off of him. Oh, okay, you know, we'll, we'll do this slide. Nobody's going to believe that Nick loses Maybe he does. And I think you're right. This is 2022. And considering what the AEW fan base is, I think they'll have more respect for John Moxley. I mean, as far as the base goes, people on the outside, casual fans, maybe not so much. But, you know, John Moxley losing in GCW, it's not 1971. It's 2022. I don't think anybody would care. Bat and I even really think about it unless, you know, they had an axe to grind against AEW or against John Moxley or GCW, whatever it would be. But. You can also, because it's GCW, if there is some sort of screwy finish to this that ends up with Moxley winning or with, you know, whatever it is, I know you don't like to do this, 
But Nick Gage is a guy that a year from now you can bring back during WrestleMania weekend and have a passionate outcry from the fan base to to rally behind him to get him out of retirement again, to flip the stipulation over. And I know it's a dumb kind of thing to do, but it's not like it hasn't happened in pro wrestling before. You just need to be able to have somebody. This is the scenario with Cody. You know, he'll never get a title shot. You know, five years down the line, you could always do an angle to bring it back where he can get a shot. And I think you could probably do that with Nick Gage's career here as well, too. But who knows what's going to happen? And who knows if this does change things where they do bring in somebody to cause a little havoc in the main event? Hey, bro, I hate to do this because we might have an issue, but unplug Uh and plug your mic back in. It's got a horrible tinny noise to it everyone's complaining about. Luckily, we'll be uh, we'll be heading to a commercial here pretty soon. But in addition to that show, I have for you the lineup for SmackDown tonight. I have for you the lineup for Rampage tonight. The lineup for the Bound for Glory pay-per-view, the Extreme Rules pay-per-view. And when we come back from the break, I know all of you at video.f4wonline.com get to enjoy my ruggedly handsome face in HD every day. But if you want to see it again on Vice TV, the Vince McMahon documentary will be airing in just under two weeks. I'll give you the date. You can set your DVRs now. Let's have this show beat raw. That's coming up after the break. Observer Live. Well, everybody, no good deed goes unpunished. Uh Uh-oh. I tried to fix Semper Vivi's audio for you all. Oh, God, listen to this. And the whole thing broke during the break. So... Mike has it plugged in, and we're doing everything in our power to not wiggle anything. No wiggling, Mike. If you wiggle your cord, we're going to have big issues on the show today. I've been told that before. We're going to need to get this thing repaired. Ah, Hey, this would be a great time right now. If anybody would like to become a super follower or maybe get a cameo, this might be a good day to do it. Yeah, I could use some money. Hmm. All right, here's all of the uh, lineups for the shows coming up here. First off, a two-hour documentary from Vice on former chairman and CEO Vince McMahon will debut later this month. They most reported the nine lives of Vince McMahon will are on Tuesday, October 18 at 8 Eastern as the lead-in for that night's AWA-focused edition of The Tales of the Territories. Oh, boy. What a, what a great day for this to air. A day where, in fact, we have got both NXT and AEW going head-to-head. Oh, no. Oh, God, that's right. That's their head-to-head day. Oh, that's right. Uh, Major League Baseball. Do me a favor, bloke. Set that DVR. (laughs) These numbers ain't looking good. (laughs) Oh, man. And, you know, as an aside, Major League Baseball is in the playoffs right now. The NHL season has officially started today. Obviously, basketball is going to be kicking off here pretty soon. So prepare for a lot of uh, moving around when it comes to the schedules. All right. Here's the lineups, everyone. Did I mention, by the way, October 18th? 8 o'clock p.m., Vice TV. I'll be reminding you regularly. Eastern I don't, time. I don't need this thing doing uh, 300 viewers. I prefer it did a little better than that, but who cares now? This is, this is going to be rough. If this does a good number, this does a good number. I want a little bit of credit. That's some strong competition. AEW oh. and NXT. And you know those, you know those two shows are going to be booking that night? What? Bro, everything. <laughs> everything. Neither side wants to lose. There's going to be main roster guys all over NXT. AEW's going to have title matches. I mean, they're throwing everything at the wall. So, Look, I know Brian Solomon's on this. I know Dave Meltzer is on this. But can we really thank you for the house if it ends up doing a good number? Actually, now that I think about it, wouldn't those shows air 9 to 11 and this is 8 to 9? That was 8 to 10. 8 to 10. God, I hope I'm in the first hour. (laughs) All right. Rampage tonight. We have the uh, Death Triangle defending the trio's titles against John Silver, Alex Reynolds, and 10. We got Josh Woods and Tony Nese versus the Varsity Blondes. Madison Raid and Sky Blue versus Ty Mello and Anna J. John Moxley, Wheeler Yuta, Claudio versus Roosh and Private Party, as well as Jose the Assistant. <laughs> I, yeah, better, I, I better do better numbers than that bloke <laughs> coming up on Tuesday. A.W. Battle of the Belts follows immediately afterwards. 
in which we have Jade Cargill versus Willow Nightingale. We have the Gates of Agony versus FTR for the Ring of Honor Tag Team titles. We have Trent Beretta versus Pac for the All-Atlantic title. So two hours of Rampage coming up tonight. Also tonight, SmackDown for two hours. We have got Zelina. She's going to be back soon. I don't know if it'll be tonight, but Zelina's on her way back. This has not been advertised, these first two things. Zelina should be back soon, maybe tonight. And Legato Del Fantasma is expected to be a SmackDown team. I don't know if they will be there in person tonight, but I would not be surprised if you saw a vignette for them on the show tonight. We have a face-to-face with Roman Reigns and Logan Paul. We have the Intercontinental title on the line. Gunther will face Sheamus. You seem to say that with a little bit of a smirk on your face What, there. Logan and Roman? <laughs> Logan and God, Roman. God, <laughs> their last, that last Logan Paul segment was an atrocity. Yeah, at least we'll get Paul. We had Paul last time. It was still an atrocity. I well, that's, I know. And we have Solo Sokoa versus Ricochet. And you know, I got to tell you guys, you look at all those, those matches on AEW Rampage. And there is a match on SmackDown where the last time these two men were in the ring together, it got five stars. So there's a possibility that the best match tonight is going to be on SmackDown. On a night where we have SmackDown, Rampage, Battle of the Belts, and Bound for Glory. So we'll see what kind of time they give them, what they allow them to do. Wouldn't be surprised if Sheamus won that title either. Now I, That would us. be interesting leading into tomorrow. We've also got the Bound for Glory show. Brian Myers will be defending the uh, Impact Media Championship against a TBD. Josh Alexander versus Eddie Edwards for the Impact title. Jordan Grace versus Masha Slamovich for the Impact, t- or the uh, women's title. The uh, Knockouts. Knockouts. They're knockouts. That's right. Honor No More, Matt Taven and Mike Bennett versus Motor City Machine Guns for the tag team titles. Mike Bailey versus Frankie Kazarian for the X Division title. Mia Yim versus Mickey James. If Mickey James loses this match, she will retire from professional wrestling. Oh. And I'm not saying that if she retires, she won't come back, but... You know, these things mean less than they used to. Well, we'll see what happens. Yeah, I know. I know some guy who keeps coming back and trying his hand at this wrestling thing and keeps losing tag matches. Can't remember his name though. How dare you? Me, uh, we've got uh, Chelsea Green and Deanna Parazzo versus Jessica and Taya Valkyrie for the Impact Knockouts tag titles and a Call Your Shot Gauntlet match, a twenty wrestler intergender gauntlet. Battle Royal. That is Bound for Glory coming up here tonight. And then tomorrow, Extreme Rules. Liv Morgan and Ronda Rousey. Extreme Rules for the SmackDown Women's title. Matt Riddle and Seth Rollins in a fight pit match with Daniel Cormier as the guest referee. Drew McIntyre and Karrion Cross in a strap match. Bianca versus Bailey and Io Sky for the Raw Women's title. Edge and Finn Balor for the, uh, it's an I quit match. Yeah, I quit. That's a stip. And then the Brawling Brutes will be facing Imperium in a good, old-fashioned Donnybrook match. Might be the match of the weekend right there, no matter what the promotion is. Well, it, I mean, if, 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 if Gunther and Sheamus have a match the same as they had at that pay-per-view, good luck anything beating it this weekend. That would mean one of those matches I just read would have to be five stars or better. That's a high bar. So, there you go. It's a lineup. In, how do you think they're bringing back, in your gut right now, Well, how do you feel that, as though they bring back Bray Wyatt? Because there's been a lot of speculation that, okay, we're going to go ahead and cash in on the White Rabbit thing or do at least a little bit of a, a bigger impact thing at the pay-per-view. Could you see him get involved in a match like a match with Edge where he helps Finn Balor do something to to cause havoc? Or do you bring him in against somebody else in a different type of scenario? You know, you bring him in against somebody who's not on the card or do you have do you put some impact on something that takes place tomorrow in Philadelphia? Well, I'm trying to think about who this bloke would even feud with. 
Well, Cause, that's the thing. Because, listen, I don't know if he's coming back as a baby face. I mean, he's going to get a baby face reaction when he comes back. So maybe you could have a jolly old fiend, and he's going to come back and go after a a heel. Dexter Loomis? Oh, I, mean, he, <laughs> I mean, he could be he could be a heel, in which case, well, who does he who is he going to feud with? Drew McIntyre? I mean, you could do the, the uh, Karrion Cross-Drew McIntyre match and... You know, Drew McIntyre, I, I think they really want to get this Karrion Cross going. So I, I could see Karrion Cross beating Drew after some sort of interference from the returning Fiend. I could see them doing that. I don't know if that's what they're going to do. And then Drew McIntyre could feud with The Fiend. That poor bloke. <laughs> but again, I don't know. I don't know what The Fiend's. I don't know if he's going to do magic. If he comes back, and by the way, a correction, uh, that match on SmackDown that I talked about was not with Sheamus. It was with Kevin Owens. And uh, although I was match. although I was wrong, let me tell you something. Bray White with no hocus pocus versus Sheamus, that'd be a oh, banger. Yeah. So anyway, Good. this guy can do hard hitting, you know, good matches. He doesn't need to do the magic and hocus pocus. And you know, Drew McIntyre, if you've watched, if you watched a lot of Drew McIntyre, I don't think this bloke likes a lot of magic and hocus pocus. So that would actually be a good first feud to to kick off a new fiend who has the same mask, character, everything, but doesn't do magic. I'd be fine with that. Well, and that, you know, if you wanted to throw Edge into the mix, because we already know what Edge's feelings are on Hocus Pocus, 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 Pocus and Magic and Hoka all that stuff. What? <laughs> Poca Hoka? That's uh, some, some Pocahontas Hocus and whatnot. Pocus. So with that Hocus Pocus, we know Edge doesn't like it. So that's why I can see maybe him splitting off if they decide to turn AJ Styles, have an AJ Styles Edge feud or something like that, leading into a big match at, at Survivor Series. Could definitely see something like that. And then Drew McIntyre really in some ways would be the perfect person for him to come back with. Now, I don't know if they want to do that because obviously you got – do you want to be done with Karrion Cross and Drew McIntyre right away? I guess maybe you could be, and if you could, that's probably the right guy to put him in with. And again, you just hope that there's not as much hocus pocus and there's a lot more fisticuffs and big meaty men slapping meat because Kevin Owens, Sheamus, Drew McIntyre, Bobby, anybody that goes out there and thumps, I mean, that's really, again, that stuff is always going to get over. That stuff is always going to be what people want to see. In general, hey, more than the magic. Hey, listen. Speaking of magic, speaking of magic, this person says he'd love to see me and Edge go and uh, go crazy at a magic show with anger. I like magic. I used to be a magician. Huh? You see this? See this coin? Watch. Blow, Mike. Whoa! Amazing. I like magic. I don't like magic on my wrestling show. You know what? I quit. See you next week, everybody. I'm going to make this. Back on the show, Mike Sempervivi here with you, Wrestling Observer Live. Isn't that amazing? And thankfully, I was able to make Brian disappear. And thankfully for me, he doesn't have any type of weird magical... Ah! Ah! I'll be damned. Point to you, Brian Alvarez. Not sure how exactly how he did that. He was a big fan of Harry Anderson on Night Court when he was there. Anyway, back on the show, Wrestling Observer Live. It's Friday. It's Friday, and, and Brian's out of here, and I'm here with you, and hopefully you can hear me okay with this tinny microphone, and there's still a lot of stuff to get into, not the least of which is Oni Lurkin? Oni Lurkin. Kind of forgot about Oni, actually, when I thought he was released uh, from the from WWE. And now he's working as a full-time coach at the Performance Center. Uh, apparently, according to Dave's Wrestling Observer Newsletter, which, by the way, if you're not a subscriber to the Wrestling Observer Newsletter, I if this isn't the year to try to convince you, I, I, don't, I, I don't know what would be, to be honest with you, because... What Dave wrote about Vince McMahon once he was ousted from WWE was an amazing issue. This issue with Antonio Inoki is something else as well, too. So an incredibly packed newsletter this week, including the news on Oni Lorcan, Chris Gerard, who was brought in working as a guest coach, guest coach at the Performance Center. But he's the type of guy that I would love to see 
stay on in a role as a coach. I mean, how many bad matches did you see from Oni Lorcan? There really weren't a whole lot of them, were they? He's always technically proficient, always technically sound. He's one of those guys like Drew Gulak who, yes, they don't have their wrestlers work in that style all of the time. Obviously not. We've seen this with trainers. They had Steve Kern. They had Ricky Steamboat. They've had a lot of guys from the past who were great technical workers, and that's not exactly what they want them to do. But they still need to be trained in some of this, and you know, actual trained professional wrestlers. And only Lorcan is a great person to actually do that with. So, you know, good, good for him. And congratulations. I think that would be a good move by WWE to bring him on full time. What I think is a big negative for WWE is the fact that they have apparently released Nigel McGuinness. And we heard about all of the announcer shakeups that were taking place yesterday. And I kind of wondered what does this mean for Nigel? You know, with Booker T getting this the spot with Vic Joseph, which I believe is temporary for now, because once Pat McAfee returns from ESPN and gets back in his role on SmackDown, I would assume that Wade Barrett would slide back down to NXT. He and Vic Joseph, I think, are a very good team. I like that whole team. Mackenzie Mitchell is a backstage interviewer. I like that whole package, and I think that's probably what was going to happen. But I thought with Nigel McGuinness, whatever happens with NXT Europe, he was she probably was going to have a role there because he was not inserted anywhere else. But apparently that's because he's been released, and that com- information comes from PW Insider. He's been with the company since 2016. He was doing the NXT Level Up show. And, you know, it's uh, it's frustrating because he's really good at that job. And in AEW, they have a zillion announcers. I mean, they hired Big Show to be an announcer. They hired Mark Henry to be an announcer. They have Jim Ross. They have Taz. They have Excalibur. They have Tony Schiavone. I'm sure there's names I'm forgetting. Nigel McGuinness would be a great person to have on one of those shows. And I don't watch Dark and Elevation much. I hate to say this. I just don't have the time. So a lot of times when I see Dark and Elevation, it happens to be on Botchamania, where <laughs> where it's Taz. And we get some of the commentary there. So, And he and Excalibur are great together. They're hilarious together. The little bits I see, you know, they're having a good time. But... Is that a good place to maybe have a Nigel McGuinness? Is it good to have Nigel McGuinness on staff because of all of, of his experience? He's got experience acting, you know, outside of the wrestling realm. He's got experience, you know, being a a public speaker outside of the wrestling realm on top of the fact that, I mean, technically he was fantastic. I mean, you know, he could, again, I don't have to go through the, the accolades of Nigel McGuinness for most of you out there. I mean, he was a tremendous professional wrestler, and you can't tell the story of Ring of Honor without Nigel McGuinness, without Samoa Joe, without Brian Danielson, without some of the guys that were there. And maybe that's a really good spot for him, is maybe ending up doing something with Ring of Honor. If not as a announcer, maybe in the role of a an executive, maybe in the role of a you know, uh, the president or the commissioner or something like that, that would probably be, in my mind, that would be a good thing to do. And I know they have uh, Caprice Coleman and they have uh, Ian Riccoboni, and they're good. They're more than good. They're, in fact, over time, I think Caprice really doesn't get his credit for how good and how comfortable he has gotten. And the same thing with Ian, too, although Ian started off really good. You know, he's gotten a lot better as well, too. You know, them getting back in the groove with each other, you bring in Nigel to do something there, couldn't be the worst idea in the world. At least I I don't think it is. Uh, A couple other things, too, that are kind of clicking around in my mind. You know, Brian did bring up the at the beginning about Nick Gage and John Moxley that the rest of that card as well, too. And I did mention Nick Wayne and Shun Skywalker, Tony Deppin and Yamato may be one of those matches this weekend, too, and I'm sure there's going to be a handful that kind of can be put in the the steal-the-show category, but that's one of those matches that probably isn't going to get a lot of shine with a lot of uh, other matches taking place all over the place this weekend, but I love that match on paper. They have a GCW Tag Team Championship, the Mega Bastards of Alex Colon and John Wayne Murdoch against Arena Yamashita and Drew Parker, which ought to be violent, 
for sure, uh, for sure. Jordan Oliver and Jonathan Gresham, just another, you know, it's like kind of like Nick Wayne, just another brick uh, on the on the steps for Jordan Oliver to kind of continue to get better. They had Jordan Oliver and Nick Wayne in matching gear over in uh, GCW when they went to Japan against Freedom. So, you know, to see Nick Oliver and Nick Wayne or to see Jordan Oliver and Nick Wayne were as a tag team too over here with the matching gear and all that sort of stuff, I think that's pretty cool. Joey Janelle and Cole Radrick against uh, Ciclope and Miedo Extremo. That ought to be interesting as well, too. And then Ali Catch against Sawyer Wreck is going to be what fills out the first night of the uh, the Fight Club shows. So I, outside in Atlantic City, I mean, that is certainly a decision uh, to make. And I'm not exactly sure if they had planned it that way or... If something else had gone on, I know there's a kickboxing event that's going to be taking place inside the showboat. So it's certainly a decision to make. And I just hope for the people that are going that the weather actually holds out for them a little bit. Because <laughs> that's, ah, man, 50 degrees with the wind coming off the water. In fact, it's going to be under 50 degrees with the possibility to rain with the wind coming off the water like that. It is, uh, again, I, man, I feel bad for the people that are going to be working out there. although. Some of those people worked during the pandemic outside, including in, I think it was, where did they move the collective? Indianapolis, because uh, I guess it was helped out along by Spider Nate Webb or, uh, that was able to get a park to let GCW in. And, and for those people that had to perform outside in the sun, and I remember that was the same way in Atlantic City. In fact, at the pier, you know, at least it's not during the day where you have to worry about all the sun and, and shadows and things like that, that, you know, as a fan, you may not think about. But when you're in the ring, it probably throws you off a little bit. Sad news for anybody looking to vote for Dwayne Johnson to be your president of the United States coming up. He is ruling out the run for president, apparently told CBS uh, in an interview that are, that will air on Sunday morning uh, that he does not want to run for president. He says it's off the table. Yes, it's off the table. I will say this because it requires a B-side to this. I love our country and everyone in it. I also love being a daddy, and that's the most important thing to me is being a daddy. Number one, especially during this time, this critical time in my daughter's lives, because I know what it was like to be on the road and be so busy that I was absent for a lot of the years when my first daughter was growing up in these critical, in these critical ages at this critical time in their life, and that's what the presidency will do. Sure, CEO sounds great, but the number one thing I want to be is daddy, and that is it. Probably a smart thing to do. You know, I uh, I don't know. Ah, I don't know. Uh, you know, the, the rock running for president when you've never served any public office. And I know, you know, the experience levels when it comes to the presidency has gotten less and less in this country. But. I, I know he announced that we killed uh, Osama bin Laden and all, and he had some sort of connect that way. But I mean, I mean, come on, <laughs> really, really? <laughs> it's so I, I you know, I, I any thought of him running for president, too. I mean, it drags up a whole bunch of things, not only from your past, but from your family's past. And is that something that you really want? Forget about the fact that you're going to lose time with your daughter's. What about the fact that you're going to have people in the media and muckrakers and everything else really diving deep into every single family member looking for some sort of dirt, looking for some sort of story to bring up? And doesn't sound very appetizing to me. So uh, it just to me, I, I, I never took it seriously anyway. I know a lot of other people did. And maybe, you know, he was dead serious about doing it. But I am more than happy that that is not happening Oh, by the way, for everybody listening to on uh, Sports Byline for Sports, uh, middle of the sixth right now, still no score. St. Louis and Philadelphia here as the NL Wild Card game is, has kicked off here. And again, some of these uh, changes are going to affect programming when it comes to AEW, especially here coming up. Again, hockey season starting. You know, there's going to be a lot of people who get upset again when you look at the NHL's ratings in comparison to AEW and you go, my God, you know, wrestling gets X amount of times better ratings for, you know, against most hockey games. But prestige sport, 
You know, whether you like it or not, they're the ones who are going to make out and obviously bring in the advertisers and can do things that AEW doesn't. So they're always going to be in that situation uh, when it comes to the, the four major sports, even hockey, which in this country, again, is it, it can be a little bit shaky. Uh, let's see here. What else we got going on in the world? I don't have a super, uh, I, I don't have a, a, a super, uh, Twitter or whatever to, 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 to follow. So I, I can't really hype that up and great Firefox is now crashed as well too. And I'm just expecting at this point in the game for the computer to melt down fully as it did a couple of, of weeks ago and this tie line to just die and this microphone to die. And then, then I'm just stuck waiting to die. But at least I'll be watching a whole lot of pro wrestling along the way here as I'm not able to bring anything up as it's a blank screen now. Hopefully you can still hear me. I assume you can still hear me. Of course, if if if, if any of the producers were yelling in my ear, uh, I, I, you know, I, I wouldn't be able to tell that as I stall terribly and pathetically trying to get to this break here as I try to bring the camera back up for all of you who now lost it being on. <laughs> being on youtube or being on twitch i am so happy to get this stupid week over with i really really am am i back am i back we got the giraffe there's the giraffe yep yep that's exactly how this week was folks just a uh, terrible terrible somebody get andrade in here to punch out the rest of this week so we can all get the hell out of here and go home Thank God there's the end music. We'll be right back. Wrestling Observer Live. Back on this show, Mike Sempervivi here with you. Still, I'm assuming you can hear me at least. I believe now you can see me again, too. I think this was the perfect uh, period to put on the sentence that was this week. It felt like a, a prison sentence at times for me. But, damn it, we survived because that's what we do. And I always have the I always have professional wrestling, at least, that I can keep, can keep me going and, and keep me inspired to to want to get through things here. And if, if you want to learn more about professional professional wrestling and i mean learn more about professional wrestling you should become a subscriber to wrestlingobserver.com for that wrestling observer newsletter just an amazing job dave Meltzer did covering the career of antonio noki as well as all the other news that is taking place in the world of professional wrestling and mixed martial arts and it is going to be a very busy weekend talked about gcw we talked about extreme rules coming up here in philadelphia we've got smackdown tonight we have rampage slash battle of the belts tonight live from washington dc you have cards going on all over the world including this Impact Wrestling Bound for Glory show, which I am actually looking forward to seeing. One of the reasons why is because I believe that Jordan Grace and Masha Slamovich can be a really, really good match, and I really like Masha Slamovich a lot. Uh, Jordan Grace, in, in, you know, the angle that they did with Masha flipping over the table on top of her, saying she was going to kill her, I thought that came across really well. It's impossible for me to believe that Josh Alexander and Eddie Edwards will not be a gr good match. I know that ROH fans in the moment at the time really were not big fans, some of them, of Mike Bennett and Matt Taven. But when you take your personal opinions on what you wanted ROH to be or, or them out of the mix— they're really very, very good. They're really good as a team. Are they as good as the Motor City Machine Guns? I don't know about that. I, I had argued that the Motor City Machine Guns are a certainly of the 2000s. They're a, a Hall of Fame 2000s tag team. And that match is going to probably be pretty damn good. Same thing with Speedball Mike Bailey and Frankie Kazarian. Since Speedball's been back in the country, have you seen a bad match with him? It's almost impossible. So I am really looking forward to this Impact Wrestling show tonight. So whatever your style of wrestling is, it's going to be there for you. Shall talk to you all again after a while. <laughs> 